Recently, I received a comment from a viewer. They stated that they were still having an overheating issue still prior to seeing my video. He said he had already set up the camera to save photos to the CF Express and the videos to the SD card. He said it was frustrating because he couldn't record a one hour event without seeing the issue at least seven times in one hour. And that's why I made this video for all the viewers that are still having this overheating problem. If you're a Nikon mirrorless camera user, then you probably witnessed a hot card warning while creating a video in 4K. Nikon users aren't alone on an island. Every camera manufacturer is having overheating issues with their mirrorless cameras. If you own a Canon, a Sony, or other mirrorless camera, the solutions in this video will help you with your overheating problems. In this video, I will do the research for you and give you some recommendations at the end of the video to help you make it through your next event. How's it going? My name is Vaughn. I use my Nikon Z62 extensively for video in 4K. I do my YouTube videos with this camera. Today, I'm following up on a video I did previously about the Nikon Z62's overheating. Initially, there wasn't much information on the Nikon Z cameras because they were new to the market. Now I have the answers you've been waiting for. If you're new to Nikon, welcome. Let's start solving your overheating problems. The number one issue that most users have is going cheap. I'm guilty of that. When I first brought my Nikon Z62, I went cheap on the most important part of the camera, the memory card. I bought the cheapest CF Express card I could find to get me started. A good card could cost well over $100. The problem started at my first event when I used this memory card with my camera. I detailed my experiences in the video above. Now here's the problem. If you're not technical, then I will make it simple. This memory card had a data transfer speed below 250 megabytes. Nikon recommends that at least at a minimum, you have 250 megabytes or more to record 4K. In Nikon note, it says movie recording may stop unexpectedly when memory cards with lower speed class ratings are used. Just in case you bought a memory card previously, SanDisk and other memory chips manufacturers have problems with bad memory cards. So check your model numbers for recalls. With this information, I realized that my GR card was causing a bottleneck in my camera. So I upgraded my CF Express card to a SanDisk Extreme Pro 64 gigabyte card with a read speed of 1500 megabytes and a write speed of 800 megabytes. But the switch of memory cards didn't resolve my problems. The results from both memory cards were surprising. I will leave a link in the descriptions below with a link to the memory card compatibility list so that way you can buy the right memory card. Let's start this test with a side-by-side -side comparison of both memory cards with different configurations. First, I will test a generic memory card with a generic battery, the ENENEL15B. -E this is from an older camera. Let me make sure I have it right side up. Please note the test was performed over two cycles of the camera, a 29 minute recording limit. So the clips are edited to show the first cycle and then the second cycle. In test number one, I will show you how long it took the GR CF Express card as the primary card to overheat. The CR memory card with the generic battery with a starting temperature is 76.3 degrees, which is room temperature. At 30 minutes, the temperature reached 97.6 degrees. At the 47 minute mark, the camera's generic battery started to fully discharge. The temperature went up to 100.6 degrees at the LCD screen. Under the LCD screen, the temperature was a whopping 109.7. That's hot. Now test number two. The primary card for the video is the SanDisk Extreme Pro 64 megabyte CF Express card type two with a genuine Nikon battery, the ENEL15C. This is the newer battery with a higher capacity. The SanDisk memory card with a Nikon battery starting temperature is 81.4 due to the room temperature rising from the test. 
At 30 minutes, the temperature reached 97.4 degrees. At the 54 minute mark, the hot car warning showed. The temperature was 100.1 degrees at the LCD screen. Under the LCD screen, the temperature was a whopping 109.1. With this setup, you will get about 10 extra minutes of record time with a room temperature of 76.3 versus 81.4. Just do the math. Test number three, the primary card for the video is a SanDisk Extreme Pro 64 megabyte SD card with a genuine Nikon battery. Once more, the SanDisk memory card with the Nikon battery starting temperature is 80.7. At 30 minutes, the temperature reached 90.7 degrees. At the 58 minute mark, the hot card warning showed again. The temperature was 95.2 degrees at the LCD screen. Under the LCD screen, the temperature was 99.9. .9. With this setup, the camera almost made it to two cycles for a full hour. Here's a comparison of the different configurations. The takeaway from these tests is that the generic battery was creating the most heat at 107 degrees through two cycles. The generic GR memory card minimized the recording time due to the heat it created due to it not being able to handle the right speeds. The processor and the memory cards were adding to the overheating for all the tests, so you have to factor that in. Swapping the SD and the CF Express cards as primary gave me an additional five to 10 minutes recording time. And if you need to know more information, you can go into your camera's menu and change which one is primary. Now that you have more information, it's time for the recommendation. Most hybrid cameras made today have a 29 minute limit. And this is basically to help the batteries cool and for to help the camera cool. N newer cameras like the Nikon Z9 don't have this limitation. Here are my recommendations for you to get longer record times. Use the correct memory cards or newer, faster cards with better heat dissipation from the compatibility list. Turn off your camera when it's not being used. So if you're in between events and you have a little moment, turn it off. In between recording cycles of 29 minutes, I would change the battery so you can have a cooler battery so the camera doesn't have as much heat. This one's very important, especially if you live in a place like Texas. Don't use your camera in extreme heat. In Texas, it can reach up to 100 degrees. So I usually have to do my videos indoors. And if I go outside, I usually do it during the golden hours when it's a little cooler. Extend the LCD screen from the body of the camera. This will help relieve heat from the processor. Another tip is to open the battery compartment. This will help vent some heat away from the camera's battery. A good recommendation is to use a battery adapter. I use a battery adapter while creating these YouTube videos. I get a longer recording time without having to worry about overheating. If you're outside, work in the shade or in a sheltered area so that way you and the camera can stay cool. Also, use a portable fan. This will help lower the camera's temperature as long as you open the bag. Very important, don't throttle the camera but while you're doing video and take photography. I did this in the beginning and this caused the memory card buffer to work overtime and it also created uh, extra heat from the battery uh, expending extra energy. So be careful of that. Finally, use an external video recorder to alleviate heat. An external recorder will relieve the processor of heat. I purchased an Atmos Ninja 5 Follow the link above for more information. I will leave a link in the descriptions below where you can view the equipment used in this video. I hope this video helped you with your overheat issues. Sending in your camera to Nikon could cost you three to $600 if it's out of warranty. Hopefully this troubleshooting video will give you the peace of mind you had when you first purchased your mirrorless camera. I'd like to thank you all for watching my videos and for leaving those comments. I use comments to solve everyday camera problems. Watch my other videos about Nikon and other cameras. Maybe you'll find a solution in one of those videos for one of your issues.